for close to two years. He works in my department, and I have the privilege of being his mentor in, tor in Toastmasters, and he has done me proud. <laughs> <laughs> Elliot uh, loves hockey, as he will introduce and talk to us of today. He also loves race cars, and he loves entering programs into cats. <laughs> <laughs> so I will turn the time over to Elliot, who I must note is an award-winning teller of tall tales. <laughs> game of the season. It was a championship game at my local adult hockey league just a few months ago. And there were 14 of our teammates in the locker room putting on our gear. And it was so quiet you could hear a pin drop. All of us focusing on what is about to happen on that very ice. I've been there many times before. In fact, I've played hockey for most of my life, so this was nothing new to me. And each time, I just recall certain instances of my life as I put on my pants, something pops in my mind. Put on my skates, I tighten so tight until my toes go numb. It brings back memories. I even don my sword, and I get ready for battle. <laughs> and as I walk through the hallway towards that ice rink, it's like a gladiator with my weapon, my armor, my helmet, ready to do battle, I start to reminisce of What's truly happening? All, how did I get to that very point in my life through my hockey career? Fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests, I would like to bring you through a story of my life of how hockey became so instrumental in everything I do throughout my life. It all started when I was born, literally. In fact, one of the first instances of ice hockey, my parents took myself and my brother to an open ice rink public skating session to teach my brother how to skate. Granted, I was a few months old. My mom took me in a stroller and put me in a penalty box. <laughs> <laughs> and I, each time they would make a round around the public skate, my mom would come and check on me to ensure that I was safe and warm. Don't worry. I learned two valuable lessons that day, regardless if it was conscious or subconscious. Was that one, hockey is where the heart is. <laughs> And two, I must have done something really bad to get an hour's worth of penalty minutes. <laughs> As I grew older, my dad enlisted us into the youth hockey program. And you can just imagine little mini mites, about five, six years old, nothing more than bobblehead, people wobbling around the ice. <laughs> but that was me. And I remember my very first game, in fact. I had my hockey stick, I got my passes on, took a couple shots. Yeah, I'm kind of digging this hockey thing. How hard could it be? Until I realized that the skating and the shooting part wasn't too bad. It was, when you fall down, how do you get back up? <laughs> and each time I just recall, every time I'd fall down, I'd have to crawl on my hands and feet. <laughs> up to the boards, pick myself up, <laughs> skate across like three steps more, fall down, and do it all over again. <laughs> Another hilarious instant that's pretty much burned into my soul was not just falling down on the ice, but trying to take the shift off so that the next shift of skaters can come on. And I wasn't aware of the length of the hockey stick at the time. So as I was skating towards the bench, I kept my stick in a much relaxed fashion, such as this. And physics dictated that <laughs> if the stick hit the wall, I would go forward. <laughs> that happened, and I was probably the loudest roar of laughter I've heard. <laughs> A few years later, my dad realized that I probably needed skills after what I've just demonstrated. So he enlisted us into an early morning advanced skating instruction hosted by Brett Hall, who was a former Phoenix Coyote. And I vividly remember the early morning ice sessions we'd have at 6 a.m. at the local Coliseum, which is now the State Fair Grounds. And I recall out in the open ice where there's not a single sound. It was pitch black, incredibly foggy from the humidity in the air. And I recall the horrendous smell of sweat and rats. <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> and it was so quiet 
that I could hear my blades of steel cracking into the ice, carving my way around. It was so unique experience, much like what one would see in Mighty Ducks. In fact, I probably told it to them, and that's where they got it. <laughs> I learned quite a bit of advanced hockey technique during that era, and it really propelled my career during the squirts and bantam leagues, which are around the 13 to 15 year category, year old category. And one of my greatest and most proud achievements was when I was captain of my very own team and used the leadership and skills that I've learned in the advanced techniques training session to become a better leader, even in my own hockey team. And I vividly remember that we won my first championship. I was so stoked because that very last game, I scored the first and the last goal. I was like the MVP. Everybody was cheering me on. And it was so, so grandiose of a moment that during the award ceremony where our teams were lined up on the, the blue lines, which are the two furthest ones, the red line in the middle, I recall that the, the second place team received their medals, and I'm just waiting for my very moment where they're going to call my name up. And they're probably even going to call MVP. And it's going to be just like in the NHL. Everything was going great until I realized that the name they called was 10 guys down that way. I completely <laughs> forgot. And there I am standing there like, when are you going to call my name? <laughs> I ended up doing that again. Winning the championship, not the, not the name calling. So I've won two championships in my life. Time during my youth hockey league. And that's what really sparked my soul. Every time I put on my gear for my very next hockey game session. Every time I play hockey. Every time I get ready, I get focused, I smell the ice. Yes, ice has smell besides it being very slippery. <laughs> Every time I'm with the, my team at the locker room, I remember what it was like to be a kid. And that's something that I wanted to call upon everybody to take that moment, find that passion, find your enjoyment, and revert back to your inner self. That little Elliot Munchkin kid weep wobbling on the ice is still here. I just have to ignite it. With very small instances throughout my life. That was my blades of steel story. <laughs>